Adding compound angles to pieces adds visual interest, but don't let them be intimidating to you. I'm going to show you how we can do that without a lot of complicated math. Easy as cake. Piece of pie. I use the same setup block for all three of these compound angle trays. A mitered angle tray with brass screw pins, a mitered angle tray with ebony splines, and this hand-cut dovetail tray that starts out with a butt joint. Each of these trays will be featured in an upcoming video. First, pick the ratio of the angle for the sides that you want. I'm going to use a 1 to 3 ratio, 1 square over, 3 squares up. Um, that translates to about 18 degrees. Uh, I have a template for uh, using my sliding bevel gauge, and I've got this angle set at 18 degrees. And I'll line that up with my table saw blade and set my table saw blade at 18 degrees. Wait, I promised you no math. Well, you really don't need that precise 18 degree angle. Your setup block is going to do all the magic for you. I want to hold this bevel gauge firmly against the table. You can see I have a little bit of an air gap. Table saw is unplugged uh, right here. And I want to clear that away. And you want to point at which the blade is not contacting a tooth. I just have this fine adjustment to make here. Okay, that looks good. And this is just a reference point. I don't see any air gap between the blade and my bevel gauge, so that's what I want. I'll be using this just to do my setup block, and from that point, I'll use my setup block to reference all of my angles, and I don't have to do any measuring of angles. Next, you want to find a block of wood that's about 2 inches by 3 inches by 10 inches. In metric, that would be about 50 millimeters by 75 millimeters by 260 millimeters or so long. Um, this is going to become my working model for my trays. First, I hand planed it flat and square and jointed all the edges so on all four sides. So it's um, a good rectangular block of wood. I know it's good and square and everything will line up really well. This is going to become my working model for my trays. I've decided on the 1 to 3 ratio like I said and I've transferred that by pencil onto the sides of the block of wood. I'll be cutting those off on the table saw along with cutting the full length along one side so that I have basically a shape that looks something like a tray. I'm going to leave one side square just so I have a square reference side. The block of wood that I have set here is short enough that it'll actually fit inside of the tray as well. So it's not going to interfere with anything there. I can, I can test out the joints as the tray is coming together. Don't want it too long, but you want it long enough. The tooth of the blade is just touching the line that I have there. And I've got this kind of backwards because my saw blade leans towards the fence if my fence is on the right. So I'd rather have it with the waist falling away and I can just push this through without it getting trapped. And the height, got a tooth above. Next, I'll be using the miter gauge, set at 90 degrees, to cut off each end of this block, which I have marked over here on the wrong side. And it looks like I need roughly three quarters of an inch in from the edge. So I need to hold this square against my fence. So three quarters of an inch from the bottom, right about there, and about here. It's not exact, I just want to make sure that I have a good complete edge to it. It's not enough, I can always make it more. 
Okay, that should clear it. Lander gauge is locked in at 90. Okay, I should have done the ends first, I guess, because now I don't have a flat side to hold against the miter gauge to be able to cut this angle off. Uh, so I'm going to use this extra piece of cutoff back here as a packer to keep everything square against my miter gauge as I hold it and cut through. And that is one of the reasons why I like a zero clearance plate. Won't get these pieces trapped down in there. The setup block is going to be used in multiple ways to help me set up my table saw to be able to make cuts right and easy without math. The first step is to rip the top and bottom edges of those sides to that beveled angle that I want, in my case, one to three. All three trays start with this technique. First I'll set my saw at the same angle as the block, tilting it over so that it touches the whole thing. And on the end, if I bring it back to here, I can tell that it's flat without any teeth anywhere. You want a flat, flat surface. You want no gaps showing. That's just a shadow line there. It's not an actual gap um, between the blade and the end of the setup block. That will give me the angle that I need for my one to three ratio. I jointed the edges of the boards so that I'd have one side flat and square. Then I ran that through the saw to cut off that angled edge. And now I need to flip that board over so that the angle is cut at the same angle as the top edge of the board on the bottom edge. So that'll be this angle. My plan calls for boards that are about four inches wide for the ends. And with the one to three angle ratio, my board being three quarters of an inch thick, I want to uh, have the bottom edge the full four inches as well. And one to three says on three quarters, a third of that is an extra quarter of an inch. So I'll be cutting it at about four and a quarter inches. I've set the height of the blade so that it's about one half of the thickness of my sideboards. I'm going to be cutting in the groove for the to receive the bottom of the tray. And I want it up from the bottom about uh, three eighths of an inch also to make sure it has some good support there. So I've moved my fence over accordingly. I have both the boards set so that they will run top side towards the fence and outside is up so that I can just run the groove on the inside for these boards with the blade set at the same angle. I'm going to bring it over about another sixteenth of an inch to um, get a little bit thicker of a bottom. I'm going to be using the planer to take it down to the thickness that I want. That's it for the top, bottom, and sides. The next step is cutting the joints for the corners. Each of the three trays will be completed in separate videos explaining each of the different methods. Just ring the bell to be reminded when the new videos come out.